This is Kevin McMurray with TrackingSharks.com. Today we have an interview with Kavak Matsu, who was attacked by two sharks off Ascension Island in the South Atlantic Ocean. The attack took place July 24, 2017, and this interview was recorded a few months after while Kavak was healing at home. Unfortunately, the 2017 audio is not the best, but it is one of my favorite interviews, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. You were paddle boarding, right? So you were actually standing up on the paddle board? Yeah, standing up. Okay. Do you remember what your board looked like? Yes, for sure. Uh, I don't know exactly the board. I was, I was on a 14-1, Dalman, C4, inflatable. So what's in the middle of those? I saw one at Costco the other day, and it looks like it's just a bunch of little individual air tubes. Um. Well, this, no, this one is actually... a. Uh, this is like on the top of the line. It's made out of basically river raft material. Okay. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like a rational raft and that they go white water rafting with. Like one of the, that's what it's made out of. Like thick vinyl or something? Yeah, like a PVC, thick PVC, vinyl PVC coating on the whole side. Okay. All right. And um, what was the weather like that day? Sunny. Oh, yeah. Not a problem with sky, offshore winds. Decent, decent offshore winds at the time. And you were by yourself, right? Uh, on the water, I was by myself, yeah. So was it like off a beach? In the Bay, English Beach, but in English Bay, yeah. How far away were you from the beach? I want to say the beach or actual land. Um, well, land, whatever, whatever was closest to you. Yeah, land, not that far, man. Maybe 30 yards, if that. If that. How deep do you reckon the water was? Mm, I think there was probably like 35 feet. All right. Uh, when you dove that area, what does it look like? Is it straight 35 feet or is there any channels or anything near there? Yeah, there actually is um, a channel. It actually comes out from north, south, east, west, like the west side. It kind of comes around the cliff and then it gets shallower. So. Like, once you get out a little bit past that, it gets super deep. I mean, you're going out from, like, 70 plus feet, like, really quick. It goes to, like, blue. It goes to, like, 300 feet, probably not even a couple hundred yards. You know what I mean? Not that far off when you get to wow. the point of the beach. Okay. So, essentially, there's, like, a, a big-ass channel running around the island. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's actually, I think it's more of a ledge is what I would call it, to tell you the truth, mm-hmm. because I've actually, I've actually dove to the ledge and then down to, like, 90-something feet on that ledge. What's the uh, area like? Is there a lot of reefs or anything there? Yeah, it's all uh, mostly rock and just huge caves. Uh, mostly rock and then just, the guy just goes straight down. So what about fish, man? Is there a ton of fish out there? Yeah, there's a ton of fish. Most of the time I've seen Galapagos, I've seen one of the biggest hammerheads I've ever seen. I don't even know what type of hammerhead it was. It was giant. I mean, the eyeball was like I remember looking at the eye and realizing how big it was. You know, I mean, this thing was big. I mean, the eye was like the size of a grapefruit, probably a huge grapefruit, bigger than that, you know. Damn, dude. <laughs> um, I noticed that the water temperature would fluctuate almost 10 degrees there. Well, like the day that you were bitten, could you see, like looking down from your raft, could you, or your paddleboard, could you see down like to the bottom? Um, Pretty down close, yeah. You could see pretty far down, definitely, yeah. So roughly 35, or let's just say 30 feet of his, yeah. yeah. let's say 30 feet right there. I mean, that's what you see the bottom. If you had a mask on, you definitely see it. I mean, visibility there is probably a feet, you know? Yeah. And what what time of day was it, roughly? A little bit after 5. So is the sun still out then? Yeah, and, yeah, the sun was all, like, good enough to where it wasn't glaring. Like, you could actually still, you know what I mean? Even though it's 5, people would think, oh, 5, that's too late. It is, but not when the sun is still... Well, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it's not that thing or you have a lot of light on the water out of the sky. Yeah, yeah, what What time did it get dark there usually? Seven thirty. Okay. Yeah, so you're talking about at least a couple hours still of good sunlight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could still see into the water. Yeah. All right, well, can you walk me through what happened here? So you're on the, you're paddled out, you're standing well, on the board. Before I got on the board, I just kind of cooled off and swam in the water. Yeah, I went out, I was standing on the board. And left, and I was literally probably in like 
three feet of water, if that, you know, like I could step off the board onto the shore, you know, like onto the rock. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just kind of turned the rod and went the other way and, you know, I was going to go in and I was like, nah, it's hot. So I like, and I went right around the swimming buoy and the RAF, um, divers have two zodiacs anchored out near, like kind of near the point because you can drive around the beach and it kind of comes out that point and, and they'd usually jump off and swim to the zodiac. So the zodiac's, you know, maybe 30 feet from shore at that. And I was not even to the zodiac yet, you know, like right near the swimming buoy. And next thing I knew, I was just, I mean, when I moved up an aisle, I was like in the air and I was looking, kind of like looking down. I remember going into the air and just already to find out what it was. I was like, cool. It had so much force and I just like, holy oh, shit. I remember looking back down and just seeing it in the water. And I was like, oh, that's big. Like it was big. You know what I mean? It was the size of my board. It was huge. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, well, you know, and I had a split second. I was like, whoa, that's big. And I was like, well, maybe it might not bite me, you know? Yeah. I can tuck your arms in, but I like, tuck my arm around me, you know, in front of me, both my arms. As soon as I hit the water, it locks onto my arm, and I remember looking. It didn't, it wasn't that big. It wasn't, it didn't feel as big as the one that I'd seen. But it was like, and it locks onto my arm, and I was like, whoa, and I didn't really fight at first. Like, it just bit me. And I was like, whoa, you know, I'm kind of shocked at first. I'm like, well, it's actually happening. Like, don't pull. And I didn't pull my arm, you know, I just like, and it like bit. And I, I kind of did like a, a dog kind of like came with a toy or got a bone in its mouth, you know, it bites and then tried to bite again. Yeah. It kind of did that. It like bit onto my arm and then it kind of did another like to get deeper. You know what I mean? And it did that. I just opened my eyes and I remember looking over and there was just a little bit of air and I was kind of a little bit above the water. I looked and I could just see the mouth curled up and I just was like, whoa. And then it just took me under. I didn't, I just went with it and it took me under the water and I didn't do nothing. And uh, I kept my eyes open. It was just aerated. I didn't see any blood. It was white. And then it started to get blue, and I had to pop my ears. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude, this thing is like kind of peeking me under the water. He's not allowed to pop my ears. I mean, I'm probably five or six feet deep already, you know? So I popped my ears, and that's when I took my left arm to the top on my right shoulder. And I just took my left arm, and I just hit it once in the nose. I was like, this isn't going to do nothing, you know? And I just hit it in the nose once. It didn't do nothing. And I hit it again in the nose, and I just let go. And then that's when I just slammed for the surface. I just did like a big with my hands and my legs like this. And I thought I was only like three feet, four feet under the water and I swam to the surface and I didn't get to the surface. I had to swim again and like do another big kind of like breaststroke underwater type thing, you know? So I had to do two of them and kick and then I got to the surface and I was like, whoa, like you were under the water a little way, you know? And yeah. after that happened, um, I looked around and I was like, where's the board at? You know, first thing I see this getting out and I looked, the port was far already. It was like, it was pretty far away. I mean, I thought when I seen how far away the board was, and I could just tell something was splashing around because there was like swirls in the water. And, you know what I mean? Like around you? Yeah. Around the board? Yep. Yeah. No, around me. Like just the whole area was kind of like turbulent. You know what I mean? Because the water was really nice and clear and like light offshore. It was still like off, you know? And I could tell like something was sloshing around and underneath and moving. Like, there's a current underneath and shit. I knew there was something that was under there. And I was like, you're not going to make it to the board. I was like, well, you better try. Like, the board is 20 feet. I mean, the board is far. I mean, I probably could have made it to the Zodiac almost, you know? So I decided to swim for the board. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it. I started swimming for the board. And then I was like, I got like halfway to the board. And I was like, dude, you might actually make it to the board. And then right after I caught that, not even two seconds, three seconds, um, that's when I'm pretty sure it was a bigger one, especially when you look at the room. It, like, got me right on the hip. For my thigh and my whole right buttocks all the way to basically my anus muscle almost missed my anus muscle by like a millimeter. Damn, and dude. Chomped down and then like, and that's when I found, that's when I knew, and I never told anybody it was two at first, I mean, cause I was like, dude, this shit is so nuts already and I don't even give, like, I don't even care what anybody thinks, you know, and like, it fucking bit on me and it literally ragged on me. It took me out of the fucking water. Uh, cause I remember it just like, so much force it had compared to like the first one, you know, and it just took me out like halfway out of the body of the water. Basically, it took me from a little bit above, below my waist. I was out of the water. You know what I mean? I remember looking down at this fucking thing and I was like, dude. And they were like, well, can we, you know, and I remember looking down and I was like, holy shit. And I remember looking at Sean. For it to be able to lift me out of the water already that much is impressive, you know, and then it just, I remember going backwards. Like, it was taking me away from the board, you know what I mean? Like, I remember feeling myself come to a dead stop, get pulled up out of the water, and then it just started pulling me back, 
And then I was like, you're going to die. I was like, they're going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and I actually, I started, I actually broke up here for like a second, two seconds. I was like, dude, you're going to die. Like, this is it. And then I was like, fuck that. I was like, dude, I'm going <laughs> to fight. And then I just started fucking hitting this fucking thing in his fucking nose and shit. For real, man. I was fucking, I just started fucking hitting it and it just let go. Well, wait, so, and then I just, so was it grabbing, it grabbed your butt, right? So, yeah, it was basically buttocks and but and like my right thigh and everything, you know. So were you hit, hitting it with your left arm or your right arm? No, it was my right arm. I was doing like a downward swat because my left arm it was kind of like ragdolling me a little bit. You know what I mean? Like shaking you like around. It was, yeah, it, was, it like grabbed me. I think it came from underneath when it hit me. It came from underneath, and that's how I came out of the water initially. You know what I mean? Like I felt myself come up out of the water, or, or like below my waist, you know, above the water, and then. Just pulling me back, like you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, I was looking down at it, and I just swatted with my right arm. I started to do like a downward swat. When I realized, because I gave up for like two seconds, the thing yeah. was dragging me through the fucking water, and I like I gave up. Once I seen it dragging me backwards, because I remember looking at the beach and watching myself go backwards. I just just fucking just downward swatting. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think I'm trying, trying to get like a good hit, like. Because, you know, I've always heard that, like, if you hit him in the nose, like, it doesn't have to be a strong hit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just fighting back. Yeah, just, like, all those bunches are there and stuff like that. And, like, just even tapping them, that they don't like that shit. Because I've had them come right up to me, like, not curious when I'm diving, like, right up to me and, like, they'll do, like, a bump and open their mouth type shit on me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, a bump bite is what it is. And, like, I've hit them in their nose when I'm diving, and I've lost what it does to them, you know? If they don't like that shit, they turn off the day. But they'll come back, you know? They'll, like, go and come back. So I, like, did a couple down with soft. They let go, and I just was like, oh, man. I just, like, it, it just kicked in, and I just started swimming to the board. I got to the board. I can't believe I made it to the board. And then, like, I'm pulling myself up on the board, and I'm just going to come back and fucking just take my leg, you know? And I can get my legs up real quick, and I look back, and I see a long piece of, like, tendon or whatever it is going maybe, like, two well, three feet out, and then there's just a big chunk of my muscle, and me, everything just floating. So I pulled that in, threw it on the board, um, and I looked around, and the paddle at that point was like 12 feet away on the opposite side of where that pack happened, you know what I mean? Or like the opposite side of the board where there was less like splashing. So I like got on my knees. I was like, shit, dude, you need to get the paddle so you can get in before fucking you black out or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I swam for the paddle, and I got on my knees. And then, like, went low, and I did with both hands on the floor, and I did one paddle, and then it just started shooting blood, like, four or five feet, like, really, really thick. And then I stopped, and, like, I grabbed my leash, wrapped it around my arm, my leg, right up, basically, to my butt crack and everything, and just wrapped it around my leg, tied a knot there, and then I pulled the rest of it up around my arm, and then tied it, and I couldn't really tie it because it's so slippery, so I had to pull it in my arm real tight, and then I just yelled at my hand on the beach. And when they see me, as soon as they see me, I just lay down, you know, on the board and I just sit onto the leash with my mouth and I just lay there waiting. <laughs> like, I looked over at a couple of things, you know, at that point, I looked, there's like some smaller sharks kind of, like, oh, so I looked, I just closed my eyes, because I started bumping the board, just like, you know, a little bit bumping in, and then, um, I just closed my eyes, I was like, fuck, I don't want to see this, dude, it's going to be in my eyes, like, fuck this, you know, and I just, Maybe like three, or like five minutes after that, I just, like something hit it really good. And like, I was holding onto the board, laying down, it hit it real good. And like, I kind of like flew off the board, like three quarters of my body. When it hit the board, I like, put my upper body, I was kind of holding on still, you know? Wait, wait. Gonna, like, pull my, pull my legs back on, you know? So it hits you, like, like you're, okay, so you're laying there for, how long do you think you were laying there watching the fins? Probably, I looked down for like three minutes and I just closed my eyes at that point. It was, Blood is pouring in. I mean, I thought, I was, you know, and I was like, they're going to wrap this board. Something's going to happen just now at this point. And more sharks started showing up. I mean, I started looking, there was like a bunch of sharks. Yeah. And I just lay there and I was like, you know, because they're small ones. I was looking, they're like reef sharks. They're going off of those, they're like reef sharks. And I was like, dude, it's, you know, I just worry about this big one, you know, if anything. So I'm like laying there. And the next thing I know, bam, like another, like a solid hit, like flying boom. But I'm laying down with my stomach facing down and I'm holding on to the board at this point. So to get me off the board, you'd have to like roll the board, you know what I mean? Yeah. I hit the board and I kind of like, my legs kind of fly off, slide off, you know, and I like pull my legs back on. 
And then that's when I knew, I was like, oh, this is, this is really going to be it. But it never hit me again. I just laid there, basically. I laid there and I stuck my head up a couple of times and then I looked and they seen what happened. And somebody walked out the rock because the rock was like super close. Um, she walked out the rock and looked and that's when she knew. And then they called for help. And basically the help arrived and was sitting on the beach. They couldn't do anything. And I was basically just drifted off the shore. I put my head up a couple of times and just looked. And then I just was drifting out you know, to see, and I know what they have to do to rescue me. I mean, they got to use a crane to lower the boat to the water, a rescue boat that's uh, come and get me. So I was like, I'm going to bleed out and die by then if I don't get these. So I just laid there and I just started, I was like, man, just control your breathing. Maybe you'll live. You know, you lost a lot of blood. Started having like the mirage effect where, you know, you're in the desert and you, like, you think you see water, but there isn't any. Yeah. And I started hearing, started to like hear the boat. I was like, oh, there they are. And I'm just, there's no boat. Up. But the third time, I'm like, it's done now. And like, my breathing starts to get real heavy, you know, I was trying to get, trying to control my breathing, take slow, deep breaths, but then it's just really faint breathing, like just real short. And that's when I knew, I was like, oh, you're almost done, dude. Like, you're barely even breathing already. You know, you're trying to control and make really long breaths, but you're only short, two second breaths. I was like, this is it. And the next thing I know, I heard Malcolm and Jonah. I know them really well on island. They actually worked for Mom and Sea Rescue, and, and then John was there with them. And, they uh basically I heard them talking and I was like, Man, I hear them, I was like, Oh, I could be dead and I'm like, I look and then they looked at me and they just were like, Whoa, I seen the look on their you know, on their face. Uh, they, they couldn't believe all the life still and I just looked at them and Jonah grabbed my arm and I grabbed his arm and he just was like, Holy shit, he's still real strong, you know. Yeah. Because I like grabbed his arm with one hand and I squeezed his arm and I'm like, and we're out there in the sea at this point, it's blue, man. It's fucking we're deep. I grab off his arm and the boat's rocking. I'm holding on, you know, to his arm. And he's like, oh, he's still real strong, you know? And he just was like, Kavito, what happened, man? And I like, it's pretty obvious what happened, you know? And I just was like, I broke down at that point. I started crying. I just was like, dude, they tried to fucking eat me, bro. But I wouldn't let him, man. I fought. I told him, you know what, I'm not going to make it, though. I told him, bro, where we're at right now, I lost so much blood. Like, I mean, I tried to get myself up pretty good. I was like, but I don't think I'm going to make it, dude. So I was like, well, at least I'm not going to die alone, I told him. I'll fucking die with you guys if you don't mind. And he's like, in the boat, and then we'll worry about everything after, you know, we're gonna have to let you go, cause we need to turn the boat around and bring you up on the other, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. so then let me go real quick, did a quick circle, you know, like, real fast, and then grabbed me and just pulled me up on the boat and got me on the boat, and they were just like, the look on their face was just like, oh, and then they started to undo the tourniquet, and I just let one of them undo the tourniquet, he started to undo it, and then, Malcolm was the captain and was just like, Malcolm was like, dude, don't, you know, what are you doing, dude? And I just yeah. tied it back up. You know, I let him do it too. I was thinking like, what are you guys doing, you know? Did it for a second and then they tied it back up real quick and then basically, and then it was just like, my other friend was like, fuck that. He's like, you can't, you can't die here, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I can't live with myself if you die. He goes, if you're going to die, you have to die with the doctor, bro. We're not sure. You can't die on our boat. He's like, just don't fucking die with us, man. I'm not going to be able to live with myself. And he goes, don't do this. And then I was like, I was like, okay, then I won't die on the boat at all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's like, man, you fought this, this long. He goes, you know, like, fuck that. You're still alive, dude. But like, man, I don't have enough blood. Like, they're like, don't worry. People are donating blood right now, you know? So when you get it, there'll be blood. You just got to hold on. I was like, all right, all right. And I basically was conscious the whole way. All the way through that, they hooked up the, the, the boat with the crane, lifted me up, put me on the trailer. I uh, put the boat on the trailer and uh, they put me right into the ambulance right there and talked to the doctor. The doctor's like, man, and he goes, how do you feel? I'm like, I don't know, I'm in shock at the end already. I lost a lot of blood. He goes, yeah, but the bleeding controlled already. He goes, he goes, I just shot you up. He goes, it'll be a couple seconds. So I was like, all right. And then not even five seconds later, I was out. Damn, dude. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. When I looked really good at the big one, when it was chomping down on me, I mean, that's the only thing is, is it, it's white, it's nose was a lot more pointed, you know what I mean? Like, it had a really pointed nose, you know, on it. And I was just like, and I know whites like that don't have, like, the doctor and everybody else was like, oh, yeah, it was a white, you know, I'm like, I don't know, it could be, but I was like, man, I got a pretty good look at that fucking thing. Like, I really don't know if it was a white, and, you know, a lot of the locals there are like, dude, right in that area, there's actually quite a few tigers all in front of there, but there's also been... A couple of maples that were spotted a couple months, like even the last month, the month before that, people were losing tunas to a couple of maples, and they actually got pictures of it too. So I don't know what it was. All I know is it was big, and I got a good look at it, and it had a like a, a lot more pointed nose. It had a lot of white underneath it, and the white came up, but the nose was just like really pointed. You know what I mean? Well, you know, the white goes. 
Yeah. Makos and white sharks, a lot of times, like if you ever see just the heads of them, they look really, really similar. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean. The only sharks that make had more of a, like a pointed, pointed nose, you know, but I just remember the noise, with, the nose looking pointed, not like, like kind of coming pointed and then rounded, you know what I mean? Like at the, at the top too, where it comes down, not just the sides. Like I noticed on reefs and goggles and stuff like that, once they start getting bigger too, like their head will, it kind of rounds a little more, I noticed too, you know? Yeah. But, and that's, that's one thing I do remember though. I know in Australia, they actually call them white pointers just because of that pointed nose. So, really? yeah, it could be just, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to remember. I'll see if I can dig up some pictures. There was yeah. like some guys in California that had cut, like killed a Mako and cut its head off. And uh-huh. if you look at it, it looks just like a great white, but it's actually a Mako shark. It's weird. I mean, they're so similar, but I'll, I'll dig up some stuff and send them to you. You can kind of compare. Yeah, you know what? I actually, um, I actually seen a picture of the one that they took of the Mako that was there. And it, it, it does. I mean, because some of the other pictures I've seen were like the water, it wasn't super, super, this was a really good picture and it was really clear and I looked by it and I was like, yeah, that kind of, it was just, you know, a little bit, it wasn't a super, super monstrous one or anything. I mean, it was solid, I think 12 feet probably, you know, but just looking at that nose, uh, and that white on the front there, I was like, that teeth, I just was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, really. another thing is, is like, they try and say, I mean, down there, they're saying that there's no whites around there or anything like that. And I'm like, dude. What's with uh, South Africa being right there? And I'm like, whatever, man. There's like whites here in Hawaii. I was like, people, man, they're like, you know, they cruise by there every now and again. I'm not saying that it was or it wasn't, but, you know, I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff. I mean, the biggest sharks I've seen were there in my whole life. You know, I've seen some pretty big ones, tigers here in Hawaii, but like, dude, down there, I've seen like that, that hammerhead is probably the biggest one I've ever seen, the biggest shark I've ever seen, you know? Yeah, well, what gets me, okay, like, when you got knocked off the boat, I mean, that takes some serious power to do that. I know. And then. I know. And you know what the thing is, though, is I remember the reason why I knew it was supposed to be kind of powerful is when it knocked me off, but then I was in the air and I had like a second or two. It wasn't like, oh, I slipped and fell in real quick. I didn't even have a second to think. It's like you hit. And I remember everything slowed down. I remember looking down and being like, whoa, like I was in the air type shit, you know, and I was looking back, like, because you kind of like, when you fall, you. If you're actually falling when you slip, you don't really see. But like, if you like jump or you fall from somewhere like five or six feet, you can look and see where you're gonna fall. You got like enough time to like turn your head, or you know what I'm saying. I never yeah. had enough time to like turn and look and be like. And I knew already. I was like, oh shit! I remember as soon as it happened, I was like, oh shit! And I didn't. And I felt like that weightless feeling. I remember turning kind of a little bit and looking, and then. Seeing how oh, I like seen it next to the board, like you know, I could determine how big it was because the board is kind of near there too. And I'm just like, oh. and there's no way for me to land on the board. The board kind of was away already. I just like, I'm like, well, maybe it might not bite me. Like I don't know. I actually thought that. Yeah. Just... Your board, do you know? I actually did. Yeah, they actually the uh, the chief took it, and then I didn't want it. I told Cole, my friend, I was like. You can have it. And he's like, all right. And he doesn't even want it. He's like, man, when I come home, I'm like, when I come to Hawaii, I'm drinking your board and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> so I still have the board. The board is still around. And it didn't, you know, what's funny is it never, they never did fight the board. If it would have bit the board, I would have been done. It was inflatable. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Well, yeah. I was surprised it didn't like do any damage to it. But then I guess it, with inflatable, it's just going to, uh, maybe that increased the, uh, amount of air that you got because it, when it hit it it sprang almost acted like a spring you know to push you up maybe yeah maybe i don't know and honestly those things when you put 17 psi in it it's like a rock oh really okay. even though yeah even though you can go on each end and like probably bend it it's literally the thing is like like a rock yeah, yeah. i thought, I thought about getting one they look pretty cool they're yeah. fun i mean you know they're super fun i've been actually out trying to paddle you know, every day, you know, I've been paddling and like in the water every single day and just trying to get my therapy going so good and the physical therapists are like blown away. They actually told me they can't challenge me anymore already. And, you know, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. They're just like, yeah, keep, keep doing what you're doing. You know, they're like, it's incredible. And, like, they're blown away, you know, they're blown away when they see me. But I think a lot of it, like, I ended up leaving the hospital in Florida just like, you know, because they're just pumping you full of drugs and shit. And it came to a point where I knew already, like, they had me on the wound back, even though it was super deep on my leg. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't just going to sit there waiting for this wound to heal on a wound back. 
and then just pumping me with all these fucking drugs. And I was like, fuck, I'm out of here. Yeah. I was like, I'm out of here. I was like, you don't like, oh, you can't. I'm like, no, I'm like, oh, can. like, no, a home nurse or whatever. I need to start taking my way home. Like, And then they're like, you know, you're rolling range of motion. We're worried about your arm. Like, you know, you're not going to be able to, like, you know, they're like, we're worried. I mean, they were going to come. They were saying, like, we might have to take your arm. I'm like, dude, you're not going to come out. I was like, you're not going to come out. I was like, there's no fucking way. I was like, dude, you guys are crazy. I was like, I gave him a finger. I was like, if I can do this on my hand, there's no way you're cutting it off. I was like, it's going to have to go gangrene before you cut it off with infection. Yeah. And they're right. like, well, it's not, it's not going to be up to us. And I was like, yeah, it's not. And I was like, you know, we'll wait till I get somewhere where this is when I was on the island, you know, and, and it took them three days to get me off there. Like, you know, and I just was like trying to be positive the whole time. You know, I just was super positive and I just kept the mindset being super positive and being really nice to everybody else helping me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, for real. But, you know, I mean, I was in the water every single day there too, like diving and, and I seen, I mean, there was definitely, you could tell when, dude, some of those, some of the Galapagos is there are super aggressive, you know. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're Galapagos, <laughs> like, you know, but yeah. some of them were super aggressive and I got some pictures of some of them that were like really big, like big. And I'm just like, they'll come up, some of them will come up and check you out, but some of them will come right into you, like right into you and then try and do a bump and open up their balls. You have to like hit them or you have to, it's the best thing to do is take like a, a spear or like a broom handle with you. And when they come up, you just push them away with it. Cause they'll literally come right up with their mouth open, like they're gonna bite your ass, and you gotta like put the stick out and hit them in the nose to push them away, and then they'll swim away. But then they keep coming back. Like I've had them chase me into caves, there, dude, into the lava tube, and I had them like, sit in the lava tube. Oh, and they're big. Like yeah. they're only in like we're we're only in like seventeen feet of water, and these things are they're like fifteen feet, man, and it's wow. in there, and it looks yeah, it looks fake. Like that's how big you. That's when you know something's wrong. I mean, and they're coming in there just. And like, I'm like, fuck, dude. And eventually you kind of got to make a run for it. You just keep your back. They don't like it when you look at them, too. You know, they always like, when I was in the water, guys, I'd be swimming in after I'm scuba. Mm. And I'd turn around and I'd swim backwards, yeah. So I'd, like, I'd be swimming one way, but I'd be looking at the surface of the water in my back, like you at the floor, basically, so I could see behind me. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I'd, be I'd be swimming like that for maybe five minutes, ten minutes, right? And then all of a sudden, just barely out of your eyesight, you can see them, dude. They'll come right up, right into your eyesight, barely, and they're still super far away. They'll come right in, they see they can see them, they turn it some way. That's crazy. Okay, I just keep swimming, I keep swimming, I keep swimming, and then all of a sudden, barely into your eyesight again, and then it's almost like they can make eye contact with you, and then they turn, and then they go away. Yeah. Man, I'm surprised and you made it through. Them, yeah, some of them have, well, that's what I was telling everybody. I was like, if everybody really knew I mean, the guy down there knew what I was doing and I'm just diving and then, you know, going for lobster. But I never really speared fish, man, because of that. I take some lobster here or there in my hands, but like if I speared fish, it was like you spear a fish and there's like a boat there. You take it out of the water instantly so it's not believable. Like, you, you know, you can't have any blood in the water there. Oh, I bet not. Yeah, and it was, but it's seasonal. It was seasonal when I was there. I was there a little over a year, you know, and I know it's just come and go. And, there's times where they just come swim right up to you and then leave. You never see them again. But then there's times where they swim up, start circling you, and then they look, their back is kind of arched a little bit, looks like, and like, you know what I mean? They're almost like bold a little bit. They're not yeah. like, they're yeah, when, they, yeah. when they do that uh, back arch, that means that uh, they're looking for trouble, so you got to watch it. Yeah, yeah, and I've seen a lot of that, and they'll, they'll follow you right to the rock. Like, it's weird, they'll follow you right there to where you can actually stuff out of the water, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, yeah. The fish, though, I mean, there's, I think that's what I have a lot to do with it, is the fit, you know, the abundance of the sea life under the water there, and just, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, what about, um, did they take any measurements, or do you have any measurements of, like, the teeth serrations think, on your wounds? Yeah, yeah, I think I do, and actually, um, I think I do, actually. I can look in the records. I want to say, honestly, I want to say the one is a fall, um, yeah, 12 point something on the hip. And then the arm is like 10 something. And then the one on the hip, the one on the leg, I don't know how the hell they measured it because it's weird because they cut, they like cut a bunch of it and we, and did like a tuck. And then there's one area where it's just like a giant, like, um, skin graft, you know, and the skin graft part and the hole, like where the hole was, is probably like a solid eight inches, but then above it, you know, you're going like another six, the so you know, the wound went around, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, there's one right on my farm, and it'll be interesting to see what you think of it. There, like, the dock was right there, and the one on your arm, the farm, almost looks like, and I kind of felt something on it real quick. He's like, it almost looks something else that came up real quick and hit your arm. I was like, thanks for all you. I don't know. It kind of looks like it. He goes, I don't understand how the angle of those teeth marks are. You can straight, straight up see the teeth marks. But one of my arm basically looks like slice marks. You know, you can see where it bit and then it pulled and it's basically like lines, perfect lines. And there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And then the one on my right shoulder, you know, tricep and on the back plate, there's mm-hmm. also like a half moon of teeth marks coming out, like literally a half moon. I mean, I know they're out there like that and stuff, but Garrett, the record, they said if that same bite would have bought me over the shoulder, the arm probably would have, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, yeah. all your in major, because it hit me on the back side and it didn't get to wrap around the front, and that's where everything runs down. They're like, dude, if that thing bite would have wrapped you the other way, the outcome would have been a lot more different with your arm. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Okay. So, yeah, that's how it all went down. And that basically did. I mean, I kind of want to go back to this. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of crazy, but. <laughs> hey, you got to live your life. For sure. Kavak has since recovered, but still thinks of the attack often. He has been traveling the world, living life to the fullest. Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on social media at Tracking Sharks and visit the website at trackingsharks.com. You can support us directly by becoming a member or become a patron at patreon.com slash trackingsharks. Thanks for watching. Be safe and get wet when you can.